Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk on confidence. How to be super duper bumper confident? Well, you don't have to be confident uh, externally. You can also be confident internally. These days, the problem is people think uh, somebody who is very extrovert is very confident. And people do not focus on the inner confidence, that inner substance which you, you have inside. So therefore, people are always wondering how to be confident, but they don't know what actually does it mean to be confident. So many times people think confidence means to you know talk too much, you know, be very smart, be very outgoing, you know, be very headstrong, be very goal oriented. Well, uh, that these factors are certainly a part of uh, what is actually being confident, uh, but. These are very superficial measures of confidence, okay? And if we only rely on all this, then when bad times come in our life, we will be shattered totally into pieces and we will not have any support because our foundation is weak, okay? It's, it's very shaky. Foundation is the most important part of building or anything <laughs> because that tells us how you can handle adversities. And as Lord Krishna says in the Gita, this world is a place full of miseries. You know, padam padam yad vipadam na desham, that this world is having dangers at every step. Padam padam means every step, step, step. <laughs> vipadam, danger, vipad. So, uh, if we expect that uh, everything will be fine and we will never have any problems in this world, well, then maybe that formula of confidence works. But it doesn't work in real life because in real life, there will be so many situations where even if you remain confident like that externally, everybody will think you are very confident, but inside you are dying every moment, every second. <laughs> So write it in the comments if it has ever happened that externally you are pretending to be very career oriented, you know, very attractive, having too many followers, you know, very happy, very focused. But internally, it's like you're drinking poison 24 hours a day. And one point you just say, I've had it. That's it. <laughs> so that doesn't mean you committed suicide that time, but you realize that my confidence was only external, okay? So therefore, if you are interested to know how to gain that inner confidence, mm -hmm. that inner sense of self-worth and self-esteem, self-love basically, then you are in the right place. Today we shall discuss, in short, all right, from the Vedic scriptures, some very beautiful instances, all right? There you go. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you have not watched the videos from this playlist earlier, please watch. Okay, very nice videos are there, which I made two years, three years back almost. So we were watching the new videos, but I also want that you watch the earlier videos. All right. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And today we shall only discuss on this statement. <laughs> Why? Because in the scriptures, time and again, the... Let, let's talk of a very small story from the Mahabharata, which everybody knows, uh, but primarily for the Westerners or many modern Indians these days are also not aware of these stories. So once Duryodhan had sent, uh, uh, by using politics, he had sent Durvas Muni to meet the Pandavas when the Pandavas were in the forest. They were under Van, Vanvas and Agyatvas. So then Dulvasmuni has, you know, 60,000 disciples. Some say he has more also. 60,000 disciples. Shishyas, can you believe it? 60,000. <laughs> Sometimes, like when I was doing masters in Gottingen University in Germany, the total population was 1.2 lakh, 120,000. So it's like half of that university town is like your disciple. Oh, and they are like all your disciples, you know. My God. Insane. <laughs> so now imagine the Pandavas and Dorpati are in the forest, and then you come with all these 60,000 disciples. And when Yudhishthir saw them coming, Yudhishthir was very happy, he was jubilant, he was joyful, but at the same time, he was shattered. 
<laughs> because he knew that if Durvas Muni gets angry and he gives a curse, that's it, you, you have had it for maybe a thousand lifetimes. And pleasing Durvas Muni is very difficult. And then what happened? Durvas Muni came and he said, we will all take bath in this river. We means me and my disciples. And then we will take Prasad. <laughs> so, my dear Yudhishthir, please arrange for Prasad. Okay? We will have food after the, this. And then Yudhishthir Maharaj was like, all right, as you say. <laughs> and then what happened? Then Yudhishthir ran to Draupadi and he asked her that, is there anything else remaining? <laughs> and then Draupadi came to know that Durvas Muni is coming with 60,000 disciples. I mean, can you just believe it? 60,000 disciples. I mean, ima imagine tomorrow six people come to your home, un uninvited guests, six people. You, you may feel, okay, okay, I can somehow cook for six people. Not, not a big, big challenge. Wow, how about 16? 16 people, your home is filled. My God. How about 60, 60, it's like a festival. <laughs> Imagine 600 in marriages, there are 600 people sometimes. 6,000, my God, it's like a big program. 60,000, it's like, you cannot imagine because you have not seen that many people coming to one place for, as, a, as guests, okay. So then, Dropati was also alarmed. And then, she went and checked uh, a bowl which she had you know, that was known as the Akshay Patra, which means that bowl is uh, that never gets extinguished. Okay, only after Draupadi eats that will be extinguished. Okay, and Draupadi had finished her meal, but there was uh, one grain of rice remaining there. And then Draupadi, she saw this terrible calamity dawning upon her life and her husband's lives. And then she was very confident. <laughs> she did not boast externally, or she was not showing some, you know, external uh, boasting or some pro uh, external prowess like people do these days. You know? Being very flamboyant, being very extravagant, showing that they they know so much, they have so much strength. No, Draupadi did something very simple. She just closed her eyes and she prayed to Lord Krishna. That's all she did. <laughs> And she prayed to Lord Krishna that, uh, please save us. We are on the verge of destruction. We are on the verge of death. And maybe Duvasmuni doesn't curse you to die. He may curse you to suffer for the next thousand lifetimes because you did not feed nicely. <laughs> so, and when Dwapadi prayed to Krishna, then Krishna suddenly appeared there out of nowhere. And then Krishna said, don't worry. Uh, Dwapati's another name is Krishna okay, because uh, she looks like Krishna to some extent. She's also she also looks dark and one of the names of Arjun Arjuna is also Krishna because he also looks a bit like Krishna. <laughs> so uh, then uh, Krishna comes and says, "Oh Krishna, don't worry, I will take care of this." <laughs> and uh, then what happens? Uh, Krishna takes that one last grain of rice which was remaining and he puts it into his mouth. And then he says, don't worry, Durvas Muni and his disciples will not come here for Prasad. Why? Because when Krishna took that, then by his divine power and by his divine potency and by his omnipotency and his all-powerful uh, energies, he arranged the Leela in such a way that these 60,000 disciples of Durvas Muni, they started, you know, burping. They suddenly felt that, oh, we have eaten something very heavy now, we cannot eat. And then Bhima was waiting there with Durvas Muni and the disciples to bring them back to uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj's uh, Kuti. And then uh, Durvas Muni was very afraid of Bhima because if he tells to Bhima now that he will not take Prasad, then Bhima will get angry because Bhima will know that Yudhishthir and Draupadi has done so many preparations. So, and he knew how powerful Bhima was and he knew what Bhima could do when he gets angry. 
then he was very fearful and then he said to Bhima that my dear Bhima you go we will uh, come okay you don't have to wait here you go we will come here so he just sent Bhima and then he said to his disciples oh I am also feeling as if I have eaten so much you know I cannot even walk what to speak of going and eating it's not possible now so let's go let's run from here let's escape and then Durasmani along with all of his disciples they escaped from there 60,000 disciples my god they just left that place and then what happened? Then Bhima went and said to Yudhishthir that they told me to go uh, and they said they are coming. And then Krishna said, don't worry, they are not coming. <laughs> so confidence means, confidence, actual inner confidence comes when you believe that whatever happens in my life, God will arrange things in a way that uh, is for my ultimate good it's for my ultimate benefit actually okay because uh krishna says in the gita um, i am the most well-wishing friend of everybody Suridam sarva bhutanam shantim rochati. so when you have that faith only then you will have inner confidence because then you will know oh externally things are bad but internally i know that this is happening for my good and then Although you will be affected externally, so suppose you lose your job, then you may have financial problems, for example. But then you won't be affected too much internally. See, you will be affected to some level, of course. We cannot pretend to be like stones and, you know, like some uh, perfected beings here. We are not talking of that. We are talking of such a state where you feel like uh, crying, you feel like dying sometimes. You, you get exhausted, you get tired, you get frustrated. But still, you have that much strength enough to continue ahead with the journeys of life. Because you have this faith inside. And you have, faith doesn't mean just some uh, faith, you know, some God will protect me. No, you are aware of the uh, instances from the scriptures. When Krishna or Ram or like, for example, in case of Prahlad Maharaj, Narsing Dev had protected him from Hiranyakashyap. Now imagine Hiranyakashyap when he would uh, uh, flip his eyebrows, then uh, what would happen? The Devatas, they, they would get frightened. They would shiver actually. You know. When Hiranyakashyap would uh, look to his sword like this, not pick up, look. Then Indra used to come and fall at his feet. Because Indra used to fear that he will take the sword and chop him off. So... And then there's this five-year-old boy, little boy, Prahlad. And then Hiranyakashapu asks, what is the best thing that you have learned in school? And Prahlad says, Lord Vishnu is the supreme. You should surrender to him. And then Hiranyakashapu is like, my God, how dare you say that? <laughs> I am God here. I am the all-powerful master here. Everybody surrenders to me. And so shall you. So now you say, I am the supreme. And Prahlad says, no, you are speaking nonsense. You are not the Supreme. You are just a servant of Lord Vishnu. And then he's like, ah. So these personalities, either it's Arjuna. So if you uh, read the Bhagavad Gita, you can always see. You know? So you will see here. Arjuna is also depressed. Okay. See, see, look at his face. How morose he is, how pathetic his situation is. And then imagine here, here also, Krishna is giving him guidance. Okay. So, Bhishma Pitama is there. Bhishma is his uh, grandfather. And then you have Dronacharya, his guru, who he doesn't, who, I mean, these two personalities, he cannot even think of thinking badly against them. What to speak of fighting and what to speak of killing them. He says, better I will die. I, Arjuna says this in the Gita that better I go and little, little I beg arms and go to the forest. I stay like a beggar. Better than killing all this and uh, taking this throne. And then Krishna consoles him and Krishna says, no, this is your dharma. You must do. Maam anusmara yuddhacha. That think of me when you are fighting. Do this as an act of service, devotional service to me. Don't think you are doing this for you. Think you are doing this for me. <laughs> So these personalities, they also became, uh, their confidence also sh was shaky at times. Arjuna says this in the Gita, my Gandiva is slipping from my hand. 
काल्पण्य दोषो बहत स्वभाव पृछा तम धर्म समूह चेता आई डोट नो वॉट टू डू इमेजिन एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द बैटल द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वॉरियर इज सेंग लाइक दिस ऑन द साइड ऑफ द पांडवास what what would have happened if arjuna would have not uh, picked up the gandhi again god knows what would have happened <laughs> so therefore these personalities their confidence was also shaky sometimes but the best part is they were taken care of by krishna okay so therefore if you also read the scriptures you also chant mantras you also develop that level of faith you may not develop that level of faith which dopadi had which arjun had which pralad had it's not possible because they are great souls they are mahajans pralad is one of the 12 mahajans but at least the bhagavatam says you know mahajano yena gata sapanta which means we can follow in their footsteps we do not imitate them but we've tried to follow in their footsteps so if we do spiritual practices then we will also come to that standard from our perspective <laughs> so then we can also have that level of faith depending on our level okay and then what will happen is even though external things are bad you know internally that i am secure in this world nobody can harm me even if somebody has harmed me that that is because maybe god wants me to learn some lesson so that i can become better in my future yes sometimes when you don't listen then god gives gives you a pinch and then he speaks more and then even when then you don't listen he gives you a slap <laughs> so whenever you feel that uh, like uh, difficulties have increased uh, in your life then you should always go back and check in the past the indications which god had given you that this elena this person mostly a person <laughs> is about to give you some severe suffering and you ignore that warning so when you ignore warnings which god gives then especially from that person or that place then god arranges the situation in such a way that that person for whom you are ready to sacrifice everything ends up giving you such terrible pain that you don't want to live in this world yes <laughs> and only then you understand the lesson okay so therefore superficially uh, watching videos how to be confident how to be uh, you know uh, extroverted or how to be extra vagant also or how to give nice speeches you know public speaking and all this these things will only work if things are going great in your life if things are going well things are going nicely the moment there is a problem everything will be shattered if this internal confidence is not there okay so therefore don't waste much time of your life in this external you know pursuit of confidence even if that is not there it's not a big problem but the most important thing is this inner confidence has to be there only then you can remain uh, steady and that is why that's exactly what is the name of yudhishthira maharaj yudha sthira which means he was steady even in battle so that's just an example and there are so many other personalities we see drop of these examples she was not bewildered she was not afraid she directly just called krishna and now you may say oh dopadi called and krishna came arjuna was there with krishna i mean krishna was there personally but where is krishna i don't see well you can also know what uh, krishna wants you to do okay so if you read the bhagavad gita then you can know what krishna wants you to do and if you have a spiritual community because god speaks through the guru okay so therefore if you are not having a spiritual community then uh, find some association of spiritual personalities within your city within your town within your village within your metro or within your state within your country okay try to visit them every weekend if it's within your city and if it's within your state try to visit once every month okay and if it's within your country then maybe once in three months you must visit okay yearly four times at least quarterly you must visit or once in four months once in six months 
by that you can sustain your spiritual life because it's very easy to begin spiritual practices but it's very difficult to sustain okay so therefore uh, if you read the bhagavad gita you read shrimad bhagavatam and then when you associate with great souls then you will also get that confidence gradually all right and then external confidence even if it is there or not there will not matter much all right because and people will be able to perceive that and that externally this person behaves normal but internally he or she is rock solid which means nothing of this universe can shake you okay so just like go this example i gave you know like rock solid nothing can shake her because she knows i just call and krishna appears <laughs> all right the same is with all the other pandavas same is with pralad he knew that vishnu is always there to protect him and just for his sake vishnu had taken one avatar can you just believe it for your sake vishnu takes other incarnation my god yes that is the extent to which he goes to protect these great souls okay that will be all from my side thank you very much for your patience and please share this video with somebody who you thing is only focusing on external confidence and not inner confidence okay and how to develop that if they are not having idea then you can tell them to read the bhagavad gita or also the shrimad bhagavatam and associate with the spiritual community okay that will do wonders and within 3 to 6 months of your life you will see radical transformation in your life okay that is the very clear verdict of the scriptures okay Thank you very much and if you like this video click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and if you want a consultation from me then please go to the website down in the description section all right what is there with you don't forget <laughs> all right see you soon